Hey folks, <coughs> Ross here from Open Airway. I'm in the UCT Anesthesia Airway Skills Lab and in this video we're going to talk about intubating using a fiberscope or a flexible video endoscope through a supraglottic airway that's been placed already. So this is a scenario where the patient has had a supraglottic placed, could have been during a recess, could have been for an elective surgical procedure, could have been because of a failed intubation. We're now ventilating with our supraglottic, we're oxygenating the patient so we're in a safe space but for one reason or another, we want an ET tube in, we want a definitive airway. Now you can imagine, I'm loath in this situation to pull my supraglottic out and then try and intubate because I risk losing the airway by doing that. So I want to intubate using the supraglottic as a conduit. We know from some of our previous videos that using supraglottics to just blindly push an endotracheal tube through is met with quite a low success rate except for a few specific devices designed for that purpose. Right, let's pretend that this is a ventilator which is going the whole time so I can stop squeezing the bag. Now, you're going to be in one of two situations. You may be using typically one of the older supraglottics that has got a more narrow breathing tube or has got epiglottic bars or some reason you can't put a normal size endotracheal tube through. And for that, you're going to use your technique using the Aintree Exchange Catheter that I'm covering in a different video. Or you might have placed a supraglottic, particularly the more modern devices that have got a wide bore breathing tube and allow you to pass a normal size for the patient in the tracheal tube through them and intubate with fiber optic guidance. So in this instance, the patient's got an eye gel in. An eye gel is a device with a large enough bore that I can get a tube through. If you're not sure about what size tubes fit through what devices, I've got some tables up on open airway, but probably the best thing that you can do is pick the tube size you want to use, go and get the same size device as the one that you're using the same type of device and check that that tube will go through the device and then you're happy and you're good to go. Now, you'll obviously need a fiberscope for this. If you are intubating using a normal size tube, you can use a pediatric fiberscope or as I say, any of the video endoscopes. And a lot of people will now preload their endotracheal tube on their fiberscope. Bit of a pro tip. Well, pro tip number one is if you've got them, use a tapered tip endotracheal tube like a flex tip tube. There's some evidence in the literature which suggests that these will railroad much nicer through a, a supraglottic and you'll have less instance of holdup. Pro tip number two, don't preload your tube. Go and get, if you've got them, a bronchoscopic uh, airway adapter or a catheter mount that can take a bronchoscope and put that on your endotracheal tube. Make sure your tube is well lubricated, your cuff is checked, etc. And then you can connect this, or disconnect your ventilator, Put this in about 10 or 15 centimeters, inflate the cuff so it seals inside the supraglottic and reconnect your ventilator and carry on ventilating. And now we've got the ventilator ventilating with the supraglottic acting as a supraglottic and the endotracheal tube just acting as an extra conduit. Right, now we're good to go. Tube's in place, patient's still ventilating, my fiberscope's checked and ready and I'm off. I'm going to open up my endoscope adapter here, I'm going to pop in my fiber optic scope when it's comfortably in the tube there, I'm going to get ready to do my endoscopy. So, there's my uh, radiolucent line in my endotracheal tube, following that all the way down. And coming up near the end of the endotracheal tube now, I can see the black line passing. And right, popping out into the bowl of the supraglottic. Let's orientate myself. There I can see uh, the arytenoids and the vocal cords. So now, all this time my patient is still being ventilated, but bear in mind, I don't want to faff because this bronchoscope is adding some extra resistance to the ventilation. And now I'm into the trachea, and once I'm comfortably in the trachea, there I can see the carina. Preferably at this stage, I like to hand over the scope to someone to hold it for me, so that uh, it's not going to get dropped and, look, uh, and it can get looked after. And now I can deflate my endotracheal tube cuff, advance the endotracheal tube until I see that it's in the trachea, and sitting just above the carina. So there's my carina, there's my tube sitting just above it. Reinflate my endotracheal tube cuff, and I can come out with my bronchoscope. My patient is continuing to get ventilated. Now, what's important here, folks, is I must obviously make sure my supraglottic is secured and my endotracheal tube is secured at this depth, and my ventilation can carry on comfortably with the patient's now intubated. Now, there are ways to get this supraglottic out without removing the endotracheal tube but it's quite a fiddle, and I'm going to leave it in this video where we are now, because this is a safe place to be. This supraglottic can stay in for a couple of hours, the patient is in a safe place. Right, so that's how to intubate through your supraglottic airway 
using a, a normal size endotracheal tube and doing it with ventilation and oxygenation throughout the procedure.